Chapter One He has an air of gothic beauty. An old leather jacket is always tight around his body. A short beard, hazel eyes, and has a pungent sense of rebellion. This is my third time meeting him. He looks around ten years older than me. He knows what the outside world is truly like. There is something truly magnificent about him. Something enthralling. The car dominates the motorways, gliding as the air violently brushes our necks. It must be about midnight, and the roads are desolate. Awkwardly, I try to start a conversation. I finally finished school! Thank God! I exclaim. I doubt he cares. My sentence came out somewhat pathetic. Jesus, you younger! Shut up! I giggle loudly, trying to seem audacious. He beckons me to stand up, and to just put my head out of the roof, to feel true satisfaction. To anyone else I would glare or stay completely stationary, however, in this case, I know he's right. My body is operating off liberation, it is only satisfied by danger. Eventually, I begin to stand. My knees feel almost separated from my body, as they spasm wildly out of control. Ten million voices do not want me to do this but 20 million do. Powerfully, the wind encapsulates the open top roof and my head peers subtly out. I strive to go further. A gale of wind blasts in my face accompanied by the rocket of the car blasting through the roads. I find it too much and try to casually lower myself. Back in my seat, he is almost laughing. A true rebel like him would have leapt to this at first try. Carelessly, he shifts one hand to his vintage music player and presses the button. He has great music taste, playing legendary glam rock from the 70s and club classics from the 80s. We night fly for some time in no clear direction. He seems so deep in the music, as if he has reached a new dimension. He sings every word with strong compassion and feeling. The music must have led him out of a dark time, as he clings onto the steering wheel and heads for nowhere. We eventually take a few turns, leading us to a beach. I must be very far away from home now which gives me a sense of relentless freedom. The consequences to my actions now seem dissipated in the midnight chill. Curious, I am the first one to jump out of the car onto the deep, compacted sand. Completely alone, it is almost eerie, watching the dark night waves clash angrily against the rocks. Neither of us really know why we're here. We just want to live as strange and wild souls. Almost immediately, he sets his lighter onto the nearby wood, and I think to myself about how I can regain his attention. Removing my skimpy black dress and plastic crown, my eyes focus on the water. What's the worst that could happen? Well, hypothermia. I trod carefully to the bitter sea and force myself underwater for just a second. Although I feel numb, I try to emerge from the water as gracefully as possible, and I see him, a look of amazement in his eyes. I do not feel graceful, however, I'm freezing to death on a beach in my lingerie. We sit by the fire, the flames dancing softly before my eyes. The burning beauty of the orange almost swells up my eyes. The intensity is strong, and if I went any closer I would burn. My eyes examine him once more. I just feel like staring into his hollow brown eyes until dawn. I pick up the cheap plastic crown and try to analyse any meaning to it. The gold already looks faded on the edges and the granulated sand is beginning to seep into the edges of the jewels. I was staring at the pinnacle of teenage glory. It almost disgusted me. Flippantly, I throw it in the fire, unintentionally inhaling the toxic fumes. Silence is blatant. What do we have in common? He is a man who strongly devotes to keep an aura of mystery about him. The cloak begins to reveal, and he attempts to converse. So, what do you want to do when you're older? Um... I don't know, to be honest. I mean, modelling sounds fun. Well, have fun being an anorexic twig who vomits up her insides every night. His black humour is somewhat entertaining. At school, everyone's so easily offended by everything. You have to keep your opinions to yourself and get on. He seems unfiltered, as if he no longer cares what people think. Showing absolutely no hesitation or uncertainty, he randomly says, Do you want to come back to my house tonight? My immediate yes almost springs out of my mouth before I am brought back to a mundane reality. My parents want me home soon.
I'll just say that I'm sleeping over with Rebecca tonight. The truth is that I hate the bitch, but at least it will give me a night alone with the man of my dreams. Nervousness and joy fills me as thick as blood, and my mind scares me that I will not be good enough. With a brief gesture of his hand, we gradually climb back into the car. Engine roaring, the wheels churn the sand below, and drives off the beach, back into the night. I awake in a strange darkness, in the room of a stranger. I panic for a moment until I realise my surroundings. He has his arms tightly wrapped around me. I cannot stop the constant beaming smiles as I feel happy, a rarity for me. I surprisingly slept well tonight. Since around the age of nine, I've been terrified of sleeping. No one can ever convince me, and I don't know where it's from. The idea of falling unconscious without my control is petrifying. And I never remember when I fall asleep. I just remember bitter fragments of my dreams. I'm getting bored. I don't want to leave, but I should. I want to keep a desire and eagerness for the both of us. Besides, I need to find out where I am and then get home somehow. I unwind from his tight hold and dress myself. For around five seconds, I just stare at his unconscious body. Goodbye, stranger, I whisper to myself as I slowly fade back into monochrome.